And uh, it is my pleasure to, uh, to now introduce to you guys a man who needs no introduction, Father Nathan Cromley. Well, as we say goodbye to the, our, our teenagers, I mean, we're so glad you guys came. Let's hear it for our teens again. It's awesome. I remember when I, when I was uh, a teenager also, I went to conferences, and I would be part of the teen track. And uh, I remember how much it changed my life. I remember the speakers, what they said. So, guys, we're glad you're here, and uh, you're going to have an awesome day. So, this is really, really cool future of the diocese is right here. We, you know, the next bishop of uh, Colorado Springs <laughs> walking out the door. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. Well, gosh, so it's my honor to uh, begin uh, the conference, but I wanted to start with reflecting a little bit on how far we've come, especially those who are new here, uh, because this is a work of God. You are a work of, the, of God and of the Holy Spirit. To have 700, 800, actually, I heard you guys maxed out. More guys even came than what we were thinking. 800 men, we maxed out the hotel at the Antlers. I mean, like, yo. <laughs> I mean, that's legit. That's legit. And so we could kind of look around, and of course, there's guys here who are totally committed. They basically do everything, right? And then there's a, a lot of you who are here that you don't normally go to these things. And you're missing the Notre Dame-Clemson game right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry over there, you know. It was worth it. I mean, Notre dame we all know who's going to win anyway, so, you know. But, like, you know, and you, you sacrificed. You came out. It's a Saturday. You got other things you need to do, other things you wish you were doing, you know. And you're, but your wife kind of guilted you into it. <laughs> and she's like, please, honey, just this one time, you know. And you're like, oh, okay, you know. And, and, and you're here, and I just want to, like, welcome you, especially the guys who normally don't go to stuff. Welcome, and don't feel all weirded out. We're not going to make you cry. <laughs> we're not going to, you know, do a Billy Graham thing on you, you know, like, we're Catholics. It's okay, you know, <laughs> you can stay right where you are, you know. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to just assure you of that, you know, because sometimes you feel out of place. You're like, all oh, these other guys, these are the super holy ones, these are the kind. And like, that's not me, right? That's not me. The neat thing about Jesus is that he always calls us by name. Which means he knows you just the way you are. And you know what? He likes you. He likes you a lot. He likes you enough to call you, to cherish you, and to say, bro, I'm with you. So the, the thing is, is you're like, well, if I let Jesus actually like me, if I actually let him come into my life and approve of me, I would change. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that is the flip side of coming. <laughs> we do have an agenda here, okay? That's the name of the conference. It's called Transformed, right? And it's like that we actually hope that you do change. But not change in the sense of like take something away from you, but the change in this sense. We want you to be fully alive. And here I'm coming after you in this very first talk to open that up for you and just ask this question. What's going to make the next 10 years of your life different from the past 10? Right? What's going to make this, the, the next 10 years of your life the life that you want to live? Go back and think about it yourself. Like where is it in my life that I'm not being the best. And when it comes down to it, guys, a lot of us, we just have to admit, I mean, our wives are awesome. So basically, they do great things. The women in our world, if we're not married, they're just awesome. Women can obviously do pretty much everything. We, and they seem to like to do everything. So we just let them do everything. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. <laughs> oh, you can just go right ahead. Like, why do you need me? And the women in the world who aren't, of course, from God, they're like, yeah, we don't need you. And he's like, all right, well, that's fine, honey. Go ahead. I got the Clemson Notre Dame game I want to watch. You know, it's fine, you know. But what misses out then is that that light that God made inside of you is now covered. And whenever the light goes out, darkness takes its place. 
our problem in the world is always so much darkness is taking place. But the thing about darkness is that darkness is non-assertive. Darkness always loses. The dark cannot exist except. Is he's absolutely defeated as long as that light shines. When the light shines, the darkness no longer exists. So what he does is instead of fighting the light, which darkness can't do, he just convinces us to not shine it. I mean, like, I'm on drugs right now, right? Like, it, Or I'm, I'm addicted to porn right now. Or, or, you know what, I've been a bad grandpa. My grandkids don't even talk to me. You know, that granddaughter of mine, she alienated my son and took the kids with her. Now, I, what am I supposed to do? I'm 85, I'm 75, and I'm sitting here without even contact with my grandkids. You know, right? When we're just like, yeah, I mean, man, life is really hard, right? And then you go through it, and you're like, and I failed with my 18-year-old. And, and you go through the list of things of your regrets, There'd be a mountain of them. And sometimes we just feel like, I mean, what are we supposed to do anyway? We try to do good things, and it just fails. Planned Parenthood just keeps on killing babies. Uh, the economy keeps on going to crud. Politics seems like a waste of time. And you're just like, why am I still around? And what's the point of my life? And I'm like, that's right. Why don't we just listen to that, become a victim, and hide our light, you know? It's funny because with a lot of men, especially if you haven't been to confession in a long time, this is probably you. And yes, I am talking right to you. And it goes like this. You say, you know what? I don't deserve grace. I don't deserve a second chance. I don't deserve to be in this room. I don't deserve to say that I'm holy. Men are really cool that way. Since I am one, I'm kind of like a, a fan, you know. But what we basically do is we're like, out of justice, I'm going to tap out. I'm going to say, I don't deserve it. I'm not going to act holy because I know I'm not. I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Except get this, you guys. We're the only men out there. You're the only dad of your kids. You're the only grandpa that your kids have got. You're the only husband of your wives. And when you tap out, guess what happens? A void is created. And into void comes corruption and rot and weakness and darkness. And if you're going to let your wife be married to a bum, your kids be married to a, a bump on the log, you go right ahead. But that's not what Christ came for you. This is not what Christ came to do. He came to set you on fire. And to say, whatever you've been in your life, whatever you've done in your past, I have overcome by my love. And my love is for you. You cannot run from me far enough to escape the arms that stretched from east to west and the body that was lifted up into the sky and the cross that was planted into the depths of the earth. I have claimed this world because I want to claim you. Be transformed. That's so amazing, guys, because honestly, we got other voices in our heads. We got voices in our heads saying from our own dads that we're a failure from our own grandpas, that we're no good. We got our voices in our heads from the accuser, right, around us, saying, I know your sins, you know? I'm like, I know someone else who'd like to know your sins. <laughs> it's right here. And he sent about 20 priests in the room today to forgive your sins. You've even got your own bishop who has the keys, the power of the keys over every form of sin to unlock them, no matter how what you've done and how bad it is. Why don't I tell him my sins? If I do, you know what will happen? I'll be set free. <laughs> and if I'm set free, well, then I can be a force for the good. And I can go right back into that situation in my life like the warrior that I am, darn it all. And instead of being somebody's victim, I become somebody's hero. Christians are heroes. Christians are men and women who stand, yes, in the mire of darkness in their own sins and yet claim the victory in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you. The Baptist in the room somewhere over here. <laughs> My grandparents were Baptists, so come on now. We can get some of that out there. You guys can holler all you want. Because I'm kind of excited about the prospect of 700 men leaving out of here like lions. I'm tired. I'm kind of tired of losing, you know? I mean, seriously, we're playing defense all the time. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? I'm like, what are you going to do? Wouldn't that be kind of neat? If, you're, if you just stop caring what they're going to do and you started making news, 
How are you going to do that? You're going to go home. You're going to call your grandson. And you're going to say to your grandson, hey, it's your grandpa. And he's going to be like, what do you want? And you're like, I want to know how you're doing, bro. I'm like, That's going to be weird. I'm absolutely convinced if grandfathers started calling their grandsons, you called one grandson a week, and you just made that a routine. Every Monday you call one of your grandkids. Can you imagine towards the end of your life, they'll actually like you. <laughs> and more than that, they'll know their grandpa. And they'll know who you, they are because they know that you love them into being. And man, if you've got love from your grandson to you, you can mobilize that to pass on a fire, the same fire that's in you into their heart. Love is the bridge truth walks across. We have the truth, but we don't have that bridge. That's why we're here. I need you to be reconciled with God. I want you to stop at making all the excuses of the alcohol, of the PTSD, of whatever it is. Realize that Jesus wants to bring you out of that into his marvelous light. He's called you to be transformed. Now, the thing is, is a lot of us are sitting here saying, you know, I mean, like, why should I be transformed? I kind of like who I am. I want to put a, a little word out there for you all. It goes like this. The reason you need to be transformed is because God wants to transform the world through you. Now, that sounds banal, but here's the truth. Christianity is not neutral. Christianity is a proposition of something that is assertive and dynamic, if not explosive, on the face of the earth. Which means that our job is to save Colorado Springs, Denver, Pueblo, wherever else we came from. And if we don't do it, it won't be done. So really, when you step back and you think about that, you're like, wait a second, save from what? Save from all kinds of people thinking that boys are girls, girls are boys. I mean, that's a crazy thing. I'm just going to say it, you know, because it's crazy. I'm not going to walk around and let that happen. That marriage doesn't exist. You don't need to get married. Just shack up. That's right. <laughs> that's the same thing. No, it's not. My gosh, how beautiful it is to think of the beauty of a love of a man for a woman uh, until, until death, fruitful in God. Oh my goodness, that's something worth fighting for. I'm not going to let that die on my watch. Oh yeah, but if I don't say anything, it will. If I don't show my kids that, it will. Well then who's going to show you? See what I mean? Like all of a sudden, we need heroes. We need men who are willing to step into this world and transform it because we've been transformed, you see? It's not an idea it's not a list of doctrines. It's not some book somewhere. It's a fire of freedom in your heart. This is an amazing thing. God sends the Holy Spirit like fire into your hearts because he knows that if the fire is burning in your heart, then the light and the heat that's coming out of you will fill the world. Yeah. Baptist, all right. Amen. I'm kind of fired up about this, y'all. Listen, when we became a priest, we lost everything for the right to hang on to a microphone for seven minutes on a Sunday. <laughs> we intend to use it. Because the, the beauty of, of God's plan is that he doesn't do it without you. Which means every time you choose to allow darkness to dwell and you just choose to give in and say, I've just given up, there's nothing good about me, and I'm not transformed, the world ends up being taken over by the forces that are against God. And we just got to stop that. How are we going to stop that? I'm going to let Jesus love me. Oh my gosh, what a proposition. To let Jesus love me as I am now. Because you, you can't change your past. But wouldn't it be amazing to think God could take the past that I gave him and he could weave it into his future. You're like, no, no, there's no way. And I'm like, huh, tell that to the man who made everything out of nothing. Yeah. I mean... He kind of knows what he's doing. He can pretty much do anything. He can walk on water. He can multiply loaves. He can take a dead man and make him come back to life. He's like, what more do I have to do to prove to you that I could make you a saint? And basically, he's like, how about if I die for you? How about if I die for you? And this, this is the power of Christianity. Not that we are strong in ourselves, but that he has loved us in our deficiency. And while we were enemies with God, 
He died for us to make us his friends. In our world of cancel culture, where you say the wrong thing or believe the wrong thing and your dang grandkids won't even talk to you anymore, you know, you go ahead and vote for Trump and that's about it, you know, it's all over, you know. Grandkids are like, you voted for Trump. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so sorry. And that's it, you're dead, you know, canceled. You know, it's crazy. It's like, well, how about an opinion? No, you can't have one, not in this world. Isn't it something else that we're like, it's a good thing I'm not from this world. You know what? I don't need your permission to be me. And you know what? I don't, yeah. Thank you. It's amazing to have that freedom, isn't it? Yeah, yes, you do. Everyone will reject you. No. There's one who stands by me. And he stands behind me, and he stands in front of me, and he stands beside me, and he stands above me, and he stands below me. He stands in every eye that sees me. He stands in every mouth that speaks of me because I live in him, and he lives in me. My friends, if you have Jesus, you have freedom, and a man who is free sets the earth on fire. Christ came to make you free today. Free from your sins, yep. Free from your lethargy, yep. Free from your negativity, yep. Free from your apathy, yep. Free. Free like fire to spread. And I'm just going to say it, this conference is witness of that. Because when I first started with Inferno, there were about 80 of us over at St. Gabriel. First time I showed up. I think it was some sort of regional thing, you know. And it was amazing. And to go from 80 to 800, <laughs> it's called fire, y'all. And I want to give a little shout out to the Inferno men for believing in it. And for all the volunteers over these ages who've been doing stuff with Inferno, look what you've done. And tonight, today, I want the harvest. We want these 800 of you to catch that same fire. Jesus Christ loves me. If a man could say that, the whole world becomes his to transform. Amen.